Hi, I'm going to show you how to standardize a solution. Let's talk um, process and theory before we go any further. So when we say standardize a solution, it means that you're going to make a base. And if you don't know how to make a solution, I want you to go to my playlist under solutions. It says molarity. I will include the link underneath this video. Um, so you're going to make a solution and you're going to do your best job possible, okay? We're going to pretend that we want to make a solution um, that is 0 0.06 molar, okay? So, and I'm going to do a sodium hydroxide. So um, I go, I make my solution um, that's 0 0.06 molar. Again, watch that video if you don't know how to do that. Now, we're going to do our best job on this. In reality, there's going to be a little bit of error. And so we want to find, well, exactly what did I get for that molarity? When I added, um, when I measured out the sodium hydroxide, I added it, I added the water, really was um, to the greatest accuracy possible, that molarity. And uh, that's where we standardize. Um, so we should be able to get at least three sig figs on this. So pretty good accuracy of dialing in exactly what that molarity is. Um, so first thing you do is you make the base solution. Second, you're going to weigh out KHP. So here's a little bottle of KHP. I want to remind you that KHP actually stands for potassium hydrogen phthalate. This is just our acronym for it because it's such a long name. The molar mass on this, if you need to look it up, um, you can, is 204.22. It is not 71.08. Um, students will take potassium plus phosphorus plus hydrogen to get 71.08. That's not the chemical formula. Uh, potassium hydrogen phthalate is actually KHCAH4O4. So um, it has a phthalate in it. Um, so be careful. The molar mass is for potassium hydrogen phthalate. We just happen to call it KHP. That's its nickname. Uh, so you take KHP, you weigh it out, and then you dissolve it in water. So let's say that I go to my scale, get my little weigh boat, and I'm going to weigh out um, 0.467 grams. 0.467 grams. Now that's an arbitrary number. Um, I wanted about a half a gram, um, so I, I put it on there. I'm like, oh, I'm close. Okay, 0.467. That's good. So we're going to weigh out this much of the KHP. Um, next, we're going to dissolve this in water. So I weighed out my 0.476 grams, put it in here, and then I add distilled water to it. Um, now, I don't care how much water I add to this. The only thing I care about is the number of moles of KHP in here. Uh, just like when we do acid-base titrations, what I'm concerned with is the moles, the moles. So I can add as much water as I want. Don't care about the concentration. Just need to know the moles of the KHP that's in here. We use KHP because it's really, really stable. Um, so I dissolve, dissolve, dissolve. Good, I'm, I'm ready to go. Now, this is going to be an acid-base titration. I've written the reaction up here. The potassium hydrogen phthalate reacts with the base, the hydroxide, and it loses a hydrogen. It's going to donate, that's your um, acid, this is your base. It's going to donate a hydrogen. So now you have this anion um, with the potassium phthalate, no hydrogen in it, um, and the water is what's produced. Um, so uh, the indicator that I would recommend you use when it reaches its equivalence point when the moles of the base equal the moles of the acid, the hydrogen, it's a one-to-one -one mole ratio, um, it's going to change really close to eight. So use phenolphthalein. I recommend that you add the phenolphthalein. It will be clear, and then you'll add your base. It'll start to flash a really pretty pink color. As soon as you add a drop and it stays pink for 30 seconds, you reach the equivalence point. Stop. You have your volume. Um, so you're going to titrate to the color change. Okay, so pretty simple. Let me review this. I weighed out, or I made my solution. I weighed out my KHP, dissolved in water, put phenolphthalein, and I tried to eat. In fact, let's do that. Let me show you this really quick. Here I have my base. My base is this one right here. So I made my 0.6 molar. I have my phenolphthalein. phenolphthalein. I have my uh, KHP that's dissolved in here. And then what I do is I just start titrating. So I go drop, 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 swirl, drop, swirl, drop, swirl, drop, 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 drop. Start splashing pink, slow down. I add one drop, boom, it turns pink. And I read the final volume. So titrating, let's pretend that I started out, let me move this so you can see the board. Let's pretend that I filled that with uh, sodium hydroxide and my initial 
volume was 1.15 mils. Now be careful reading with the burette. In fact, let me remind you how to read the burette right here. And I'm going to slide this down so you can see it's a little bit. Okay, it starts at zero, goes down to 50. Um, I always do this. I go, okay, zero, and then one, and then it goes in um, 0.1 mils. I look, and it's for sure below, the meniscus is below the 0.1, but it's not quite hitting the 0.2, so you make a guess in between check marks. And I go, uh, I think, okay, best guess, is definitely 1.1, and then I think it's right in the middle, five. Now, if it was dead on the line, okay, so I could see the meniscus, so here's my tick mark, is that meniscus was perfect hitting that. Let me move that so you can see this. If my meniscus was perfect hitting that, then my guess would be zero, right on the line. It would have been 1.15, but the way, uh, so this would be the one, this is the 0 0.1, 0 0.2, it looked like that to me, right in between. Okay, so I made my guess in between the tick marks. It was a uh, five at the hundreds place. Okay, so I go drop, 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 drop. This changes color, stays pink for, uh, for at least my 30 seconds. And then as I read this, let me show you how I read it. I go, okay, it was one, two, three. I'm all the way down here. And let's see, it ended at 38.4, so I come down. 37, no water, 38, no water, and then I go 0 0.3, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4. That's where the meniscus, meniscus hit was the 0.4. So you're reading exactly the number where that meniscus is touching. Uh, so let's say that the final volume, put this down, the final volume equals 38.40, and it was on the money right on the line. Um, so what we do is you just subtract those two and we are going to get, it used 37.25 mils of my sodium hydroxide. Now, I wanna point out how simple this is. Notice the data you have to collect. There's three numbers on this. You're going to get the mass of the KHP, what you weigh out, 0.467. You're going to get the initial volume of the base, started at 1.15. You add, you titrate until it turns pink with the phenolphthalein. Um, and so then you get the final volume. There it is, three numbers, that's all you need. That's all you need to standardize. Subtract that, and that was the volume of the sodium hydroxide. Now remember what this means. Um, that right there is telling us we have this acid, the KHP. We hit that equivalence point. This is where the hydroxide moles equal the hydrogen moles. Well, here's the cool thing. I know exactly what the hydrogen moles are from my 0.46 grams. So when we hit that beautiful equivalence point, the moles of the hydrogen equal the moles of the hydroxide. So I've got moles, I have my volume. Mole divided by liter is molarity, and we just standardized. We just found the exact molarity of that solution. So let's do the math together. Um, I'm ready to begin with my moles of the hydrogen from the KHP. So we have 0.467 grams of KHP. And of course, I know that this is that much longer. Um, in fact, let me write it down, you guys, so you have it. This is what KHP is. It's potassium, hydrogen, CHH4O4. Add all of that up, the molar mass is 204.22 grams in one mole. Now, one mole of KHP contains one mole of hydrogen. And then for my reaction right here, one mole of that acid, the hydrogen, is going to react with one mole of the hydroxide. It's a one to one molar ratio. Right there is going to give me the moles of the hydroxide, the moles of the hydroxide. Um, so I'm, I'm not going to quite stop. I don't want moles of hydroxide. Ultimately, I want molarity. So this would be moles. What I'm going to do is just divide it by that, my volume. So if I divide it by my volume, 0 0.03725 liters. Remember, molarity is always mole per liter. So if I divide moles, notice mole of hydrogen gone, mole KHP gone, ground KHP gone, moles per liter, that molarity is, oh, we did good. 
0.06144 molar NaOH. And remember, when I made it, I made a 0.06 molar. So that is my standardized molarity, standardized molarity. We checked it. I made this molarity and then we checked it with the KHP to see how close we really were. So now when I do all of my experiments with this concentration, that's the molarity that I'm going to use. Okay, good work on standardizing a base. You're doing great. Have a nice day. Thanks.